Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Al. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the January 2024 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them, and get some tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I debuted the brand new sheet load of cards, January, 2024. This is a special collaboration with Kendra's Card Challenge. I am using one of her past sketches this month to create a sheet load of cards. And for her new Kendra's Card Challenge number 13, she's going to be sprinkling in some sheet load sketches from the past. Make sure to check out all of her links in the description box below. And then don't forget to check out her collaboration team to see what they're creating. And speaking of collaboration team, don't forget today, my team of collaborators are sharing their sets using the new printable. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. And starting this month, I have a special guest artist. Please help me welcome Helen of Crafty Mama Diaries to the team for January, 2024. To see what Helen and the other YouTube collaborators created this month, make sure to check out the playlist link in the description. Just a heads up, we have switched from the hashtag since that wasn't always working, so that playlist will be ready for you. And if you would rather just hop to each of their channels, you can always use the link list in the description box below. To see what my Instagram team has created, you'll just click on the link in the description box. I know that they would all love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. This month's printable is featuring sketch number five from Kendra's card challenge number 12, and I'm going to be showing you how to make the most of your pattern paper and cardstock to yield nine cards using that layout. In yesterday's video, I told you about the main supplies I'll be using, but as I get into the process today, I will remind you what those are and let you know about any other products and tools I use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Before I get to the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I would like to say welcome and thank you to two of my latest Paper Trimmer Level members, Katie and Edie Kane. Thank you so much, ladies, for your support. Thank you as well to all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free to all subscribers. If you're ever interested in learning more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. To get started, I'll be cutting my three pieces of pattern paper. There are some leftover scraps this month, and I do give some ideas on the printable how you could use that. To get started, I'm going to be cutting two rows from the top of each sheet. The first one is five and a quarter inches tall, and the second one is four and a quarter inches tall. You might notice that the cutting guide calls for that second section to be cut into two pieces, but if you take note of the special instructions on page one, we're not going to cut those pieces down quite yet. If your pattern paper has a specific direction, which this first one does, you'll want to keep that in mind before you make the first cut. I'm going to rotate my 90 degrees so the top is at the right side now and I'm going to cut that first section to five and a quarter inches tall and the next one to four and a quarter inches tall. I set the strip at the bottom off to the side because we will be using that later. 
On the taller piece, the one that's five and a quarter inches tall, you're gonna cut this into three pieces that are four inches wide. Then on the bottom one, you're gonna cut six pieces that are one and a half inches wide. And again, we're not gonna cut these down any further right now. I am choosing to use the one and a half inch line to the left of my cut mark just to make it easier to slide my paper from right to left until I have my pieces. There is a bit left over at the end of this too and you could either add it to the inside or maybe even make another card out of the scraps that you have left over. I cut the remaining two pattern papers in the same way, and I know I mentioned it in yesterday's video, but the papers I'm using today are from Echo Park's Love Notes collection. I thought these made great cards for upcoming Valentine's Day. Now I'm gonna show you how to cut CS2, which you will cut until you get nine pieces that are three and a quarter by four and a half, and nine pieces that are three and a quarter by one half inch. Now normally the cardstocks get cut in the same way, but today these will each be cut a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do is start by cutting this first piece. I'm gonna cut a one half inch strip off the bottom. And I'm doing that now because later it's really hard to hold that in place with that small of an increment. Once that's done, I'm gonna cut a piece off the top that is four and a half inches tall. And then that 11 inch piece that's left over, I'm gonna cut to three and a quarter inches tall. Now again, because it's hard to hold that half inch with the cut bar, I'm gonna cut the piece B's before I cut the piece A's. So from the tall strip at the top, I'm gonna cut two pieces that are half inch wide, and then from the shorter one at the bottom, I'm gonna cut three pieces that are one half inch wide. These are gonna end up being those little horizontal pieces that go across the card underneath the sentiment piece. Before moving on to piece A, I did cut these half inch strips into sections that were three and a quarter inches wide. I did actually leave them a little bit longer just to make sure later they fill the width that I need. This first piece of spearmint cardstock got me eight of the piece B's, so you'll see later here on the printable, you'll need to cut one more from the second piece of CS2. Now I'm gonna cut those remaining strips into five piece A's, and the finish size for these are three and a quarter inches wide by four and a half inches tall. So just make sure to keep that in mind when you're making those cuts. For the next piece of CS2, we're gonna cut it into four piece A's and one piece B. To do this, I'm gonna cut two rows off the side that are three and a quarter inches tall, and before I start cutting A on that first piece, I'm gonna cut one piece that is one and a half inches wide, and that will be my ninth piece B. Once that's cut, I'm then gonna cut four pieces total that are four and a half inches wide. My next step was to cut my cardstock for my card bases. This does call for five sheets and I will be using bubblegum from Tailored Expressions. All I'm gonna do for now is cut these in half and you could go ahead and fold them by hand if you wanted, but I'm gonna hold off and show you what I do a little bit later. For the final piece needed, that is CS1, and the printable calls for one sheet that you're going to cut or punch into nine two-inch circles. Now, I do make a note on the printable that this is a great piece for scraps. For me, I am gonna be using Tailored Expressions Stitched Circle Stacklets, and I found one that was about two inches that also fit the stamp that I wanna use later. Now, because this entire sheet will not go through my die cutter, I did trim it down into some smaller strips and then took that off camera and did the die cutting. Now I'm gonna show you how I finish off my card bases. For this, I brought in my Score Buddy Mini, and I'm gonna score each of these pieces at five and a half inches, fold it in half, and then reinforce that fold with a bone folder for a nice, crisp fold. While I finish those card bases, I wanted to take a minute to recognize some special channel members. Scrolling up on screen now are the members who earned their one year badge in December of 2023. Thank you so much to all of you and my other channel members for your continued support here on YouTube.
I did make note of it on the printable, but five pieces of cardstock will actually get you 10 card bases. So you will have an extra that you can either save for a later project or maybe use now with your leftover pattern paper scraps. Now we're gonna move on to a little assembly. For this, I brought in my pattern paper piece A's and those card bases. This is super simple. I'm just going to adhere that large piece of pattern paper to the front center of each card base. For me, I do usually flip mine around just to make it easier to get centered. I'll show you one of each pattern here, and then I will put on the remaining piece A's off camera. Before we can move on with assembly, I have a little more cutting to do now, and that is for the piece B and C that I told you earlier we would finish cutting later. For these, I'm going to rotate it so the top is at the left and cut one and a half inches off the top of each of these pieces. You will want to make sure that you keep these together for your cards later. And I did start cutting them two at a time just to make it go a little bit quicker and offset each of the pairs over on the right. Once all of those pieces are cut down, I move on to making what I call my card kits. And that is just getting all of the pieces for each card put together. For this, I'm going to get one piece of CS2A, and then I'm gonna grab two sets of the pattern paper. Whatever pattern paper is on the background of the card, I'm gonna grab the remaining patterns from those smaller pieces. And later you will see me offset these, switch them back and forth so they match the sketch. I will let you see the whole process of me putting these together in case you want to slow it down and craft along with me and put yours together. Once all the card kits are together, you can finish adding your pattern paper and cardstock to the card front. For this, I'm going to grab one of the card kits and I'm going to switch up the piece C's at the bottom so whatever pattern is above it is different. Now what I did, I lined these up on my mat, the CS2A, and I made them meet in the center and tried to get a good idea of what the border looks like when those pieces meet. Now when I had those with a nice border, I started adhering them down. I'm going to start with the top left piece, and when I place that onto its mat, I'm going to put that same border that I just saw, which should be about an eighth of an inch. Then once that's in place, I'm going to move on to the right piece B, and put that right up against the other one. Then I'm going to do the two pieces at the bottom. Again, trying to keep all of those outside edges looking good. Now, if you get to a part where maybe your border isn't as even, you can go ahead and adjust that because the vertical strip that we put on later, it's going to hide if there's any space between the A, sorry, between the B's and C's. I put the final pattern paper piece C on this mat, and now I'm going to bring in the CS2B pieces, those skinny strips, and I'm going to adhere that to this piece flat down and just covering up where all of those papers meet. For this, I'm just using ATG once again, and like I mentioned before, I did cut these a little wide, so later I will just trim that excess off. My next step should have been to trim off that excess, but instead I added adhesive to this piece and put it centered onto the front of the card base with the envelopes. I am just loving all of those patterns together. I continued on with the next card. I got everything laid out and adhered, and I did eventually realize, oops, I forgot to cut the excess off. So you'll see how I go back and just carefully peel up that matted piece and just snip those off with the scissors. For the remaining cards, I did remember ahead of time. I continued putting all of the card fronts together off screen, doing my best to get nice even borders and having those pattern papers meet in the middle. 
Once the card fronts were all assembled, it was time to make my focal points. For this, I'm using Echo Park's Love Is All You Need stamp set, and I will start by stamping the little envelope with hearts coming out of it in bubblegum pink. I'm going to be doing a little bit of free range stamping here, and that's just anything off of Misty, and I'm using a clear stamp block with a stamping pad underneath it. Once I thought that first one looked good, I did like the color, I stamped a total I think of 12 because I knew I was going to use my scan and cut and just in case one or two got ruined, I still had enough. Now this image is definitely easy enough that you could just fussy cut with scissors, but I did take it off camera and here's a look at those pieces after my brother's scan and cut, I cut them for me. To finish my focal points, I'm going to be stamping For You from the stamp set with spearmint ink onto those die cut stitch circles. Now I did just want to get this set up once and be able to stamp all nine, so I brought in my mini Misty for this. Then I spent some time figuring out exactly where I wanted my envelope and my stamp to go. And once I thought I had a good placement, I did give it a little test. I inked up the sentiment and got it stamped onto the circle. And then I brought in one of my card fronts and then one of the envelopes and just made sure I liked the final layout. I did like this layout, so I finished stamping all of those circles, and then off camera I added some foam tape to the back of each of the envelopes, just for a little added dimension to the cards. Now it's time to finish those focal points. For this, I'm going to put the circle just down flat onto the card front with some tape runner, and I did make sure that my 4U was kind of angled off to the right. And when that was in place, I pulled the release paper from the foam tape and got my envelope added. I then finished the remaining eight card fronts, and for this I used more of an assembly line process. I put on all of the circles, and then put on all of the envelopes. Once that was done, I could have called these cards finished, but you know that I wanted to use some of those scraps up. So that's what we're going to do now. I will show you how I cut my scraps, but you are always free to decorate or use these scraps as you wish. I started by cutting a half inch strip off the top of that scrap at the bottom and then cut that into three pieces that were three and three quarters inches wide. For the next cuts, I brought back in that chunk of pattern paper and I cut strips that were three quarters of an inch wide. I did realize after the first one I should have cut off the branding strip first, so once that was done, I cut the remaining five pieces. I did these same cuts on the other two pattern papers and here's a look at all of those finished. On the printable, I do suggest putting an angle cut into the bottom of the smaller pieces, but for me today, I'm going to bring in this punch from Stampin' Up and put a fishtail in the bottom of each. I realize at this point, maybe I should have held off on cutting these down since I couldn't get in there with my fingers, but I ended up bringing in a piece of post-it note with just that little bit of tack on it, and then I was able to slide these into the punch and get that cut. Now it did take a little extra work, but in the end I did get all of those punched and ready to go on the inside of the cards. While I was off camera finishing those, I cut some pieces of cardstock that were three and three quarters inches wide by five inches tall. And now I'm going to place my pattern paper pieces onto those. I start by adding the pattern paper strip to the bottom about an eighth of an inch just so there's a little white left there below it. Then at the top, I'm trying something that my friend Danny does a lot, and I've been telling her I wanted to try it, so I went for it. I put the two fishtail banners at the top at an angle so they met, and then trimmed off the excess. I think that is such a fun little look. Let me know if you agree in the comment section below. I finished the cards off by decorating the insides, and I also added some red diamond dots to the front. And here are some close-up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the January 2023 sheet load. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaboration team creations by clicking on those links in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.